Hey everyone, it's Mark Ferguson with Invest For More and I'm standing outside a house slip that we just finished up. There's just a couple of small things we saw while doing our final walkthrough that need fixed, but this is a property that is really close to the college. It's actually one block that way and this street is actually permit parking only for the college. So I always forget about that and sometimes park on here. Luckily I haven't gotten a ticket yet, but kind of an interesting um, feature for this property and it could be used as a college rental or a single-family home either one So the zoning is a little funky here. We'll talk about that I'll talk about what I paid for it what we're gonna be listing it for and of course show you the work we did on it as well um, The house across the street actually just sold for 350,000 and that one has no basement and ours does have a basement So that was a good sign kind of based on what I paid and I had some worries about this house when I first bought it too, thinking I may have paid too much, but I think I think we'll be okay on it. <laughs> so we did paint the outside. I mean, it's a different color. It's not something we've used before. And so it makes it unique. And uh, <laughs> oh, we did leave these trees. That other tree is so ugly. I thought it was kind of cool, I'll show you. Um, but it's not cool if it's dead, and it might be dead. And we did take out a bush that was right here too. That helped a bunch. So. I think we need to take that tree out as well. I was kind of hoping it would be alive, but it's not. Um, but yeah, I paid $280,000 for this house, and it was bought directly from the seller. It was not listed on the MLS. And I actually knew the seller, and they had um, wanted to list the home, and I was kind of working with them for a while on what repairs to do and, and what to do just to get it ready to sell. And then they started saying, well, do you just want to buy it directly from us? And so they actually are the ones who refinished these floors. We didn't have to do that. We did paint and did some other work. And um, I gave them a price, thinking they wouldn't take that, that they would just list it because you usually do make more money listing it on the MLS than selling it to an investor like me. And they said, nope, we'll just sell it to you. We'll make it quick. I'm like, okay. So I uh, ended up buying it for 280. It, it did need a lot of work. Um, but as we got into it, of course, there was more and more work that needs to be done. Uh, we did end up doing the kitchen and some more extensive work than I thought, but um, it definitely wasn't a crazy flip like some of the others that we have done before. And we, oh, that floor wasn't quite as refinished as the rest of it, was it? Uh, well, it's fine stuff like that. It's got the cool little telephone nook that a lot of these houses had. Oh, and. I think I showed this when I first bought it. The cool little, I'm not sure how secure, and the paint's kind of messed up. I'm not sure how secure that makes your house, but it's kind of cool. Um, but like I said, the house across the street just sold for 350. It was a four bedroom, two bath, all on one floor, but it wasn't very big. It's only like 12 or 1300 square feet. So it seemed to, like a stretch to fit four bedrooms and two baths in that, but it had no basement. So, and that actually sold a month or two ago, and the market has been getting better. So that was another concern of mine when I bought this and, and kind of made that offer was, the market was probably the worst it's been, you know, in four to five years, <laughs> right when I bought this property. Uh, things were taking longer to sell, prices maybe, had declined just a little bit, but you know, there's some question marks about what might happen uh, with the market considering interest rates and, and different factors. And you know, I've been talking about interest rates and things for a long time about how in the past they've never caused prices to go down. Oh, they left their trash here. We still need to clean this one too. It is definitely not quite ready to sell. Um, and you know, history and the data and all the stats show, you know, there shouldn't be a crash, nothing crazy should happen. But nobody knows for sure, right? You never know for sure. So it was a little worrisome, but uh, the market since then has improved greatly. Inventory's down again. Houses are selling very quickly and there just aren't enough houses. So until we start building way, way more houses, uh, we're just gonna keep having this problem of prices you know, being high and not enough houses for people, not enough rentals for people. And we really need to build more. And, Fortunately, high interest rates just make it harder to build and will make that problem worse over time because builders stop building when there's higher rates too. All right, so we did redo the kitchen as well. And this was a kitchen that I thought maybe we could save. It had some cool features, 
kind of some of the rounded cabinets and different things, but a lot of the drawers were broken, the doors were broken, and we decided to take it out, and I think that was a good choice because it was so dirty and disgusting underneath those cabinets, and then we could um, do the floor a little better. And this was a floor that, I think this is one of our clearance floors that Home Depot gives us sometimes. Uh, just gives us a super good deal because it's one they um, can't get rid of. And it's not bad. It has plenty of contrast between the wood and this floor. That's one thing I think that looks kind of silly is when you try and use like a laminate wood floor next to real hardwood floors. Um, I think it's better to have the contrast between the two than to try to match them up. All right. And the basement has three more bedrooms down here. So there's two bedrooms up, one bath up, and three bedrooms down, and one bathroom down here. All right, so I also had a video where it's very concerned because halfway through the remodel, this wall was gone, that wall was gone, there's another wall that was gone, and I wasn't sure why we were taking out so many walls, but they're pretty much redone and rebuilt right where they were. And um, once the, the contractor took off some paneling and said that some of the two by fours were, I don't know if they were rotten or just not good quality or the spacing wasn't right, but he decided that we needed to rebuild those walls. So it wasn't a huge cost, but still um, unexpected to find the basement. A lot of it gutted when you didn't think it was going to be gutted at all. Oh, there was one bedroom, another one here closet and we did move the closet the closet was under the stairs before and so we moved the closet over here technically if it's a bedroom your closet is not supposed to be below the stairs in our area per building codes so kind of a weird rule but um that is one of the quirks i guess maybe someone knows the reasoning behind that on why your closet isn't supposed to be below the stairs but i'm not sure <laughs> All right, here's the bathroom, which was I was also surprised about, too, because it was mostly gutted at halfway point, and I didn't think we needed to do that either, but the plumber had to replace quite a few pipes and different things, and um, we did do a new shower. So that is what it looks like now. It does look way better than it did before. And our utility room, which needs to be cleaned, too. It looks so sad compared to the rest of the house. I wonder, you know, it would have been nice just to throw a coat of paint on the walls. That would have made it look so much better. I wonder if it's worth doing now still or not. It had a sink here before. I just took that out. It was horrible and um, very old and rusty. And then, yeah. Okay, so that's the property. Boy, it's going to be tricky to price, but based on comps I've seen lately, I would think right around $400,000 is not out of the question, maybe just below. And we are, you know, in a market that's not quite as hot as it was last year. Last year was crazy, probably one of the hottest real estate markets in the history of the U.S. in most areas of the country. And you could price things at, you know, pretty high and probably get offers above asking price or, or close to it. Now we're definitely, even though the market's improved, we're definitely still in a more normal market where you don't want to price stuff too high. It will sit on the market if you price it too high. And in the past, in normal markets, I've always taken the strategy of pricing my flips um, right below what I think they're worth. So if a property's worth 400 in that range, the comp say it should be worth 400, then I'll price it at like 395 or something like that, just because that screen door is kind of ugly too. Um, you'd much rather sell your flip in a month, two months, keep your money, money moving, move on to the next flip for 5,000 less than have it sit on the market for four months and get top dollar, which you probably won't end up getting anyway if it sits on the market that long. And if you price a property too high, a lot of times you'll have to drop it even lower than where you would have sold it if you priced it a little lower to start with um, because it sits on the market, people wonder what's wrong with it, and it just is not a good situation. So. We'll price this probably in that range, but Nikki usually will pull some comps and, and do a valuation on her own too and see what she thinks it's worth, and then we'll go from there. So it could be a college rental, could be a single family home. I mentioned zoning in the start of the video. I, I didn't forget, well maybe I did, but I remembered. Um, the issue is this is zoned single family, which means you can only have two unrelated people 
in this house, so you have a family and like one other unrelated person, or if all the family is related, you can have as many people as you want, pretty much. But that makes it tough if you want to rent this to college students and none of them are related, because technically that would be illegal. People do it all the time. Most of the properties in this area are all college rentals. I don't know how much the city cares or doesn't care anymore. They used to care about that, but I don't know if they do as much anymore. And in the past, the city would come, if they found out um, people were violating those zoning rules, they could come through, terminate the leases of the tenants, kick everybody out, and uh, make the owner release it to uh, a family or someone who is all related. So they used to do that like 10, 15 years ago. I don't know if they still do, but that's something the new owner can figure out if they want to take that chance or not, or how they want to rent it, or maybe it's a family that buys this house too, because there's very few single family homes for sale right now. And it would be kind of a cool single family house. And the one thing um, it does have, I showed these in the first video, a one car garage there that backs to the alley and another one car garage there that kind of faces that street. So it's got a two car garage as well, which is nice and, and kind of rare to find in this area too, plus a bunch of parking back there. So it does have a lot of things going for it. And I, I'm pretty sure it should sell pretty quickly. All right, that is the property. Thank you for watching. Love the likes, love the comments, love the shares. Keep those coming. We'll have more videos coming up of different flips we're working on, um, rental properties, businesses, all that stuff coming up. And I promise to have an update on the post-occupancy hoarder house here soon. A lot of people have been asking about that one. We've been so busy with other projects that we haven't been doing the, the major remodel there, but we still have been doing some work over there. So. Um, it has been a slow process, which I knew it would be on that house, but it will, we should be making some more progress here soon because a triplex I own is just finishing up and that's the crew who I wanted to work, do most of the work on the post occupancy hoarder house. So they'll be ready to start on that here soon. All right, thanks for watching. Be back soon.